Uh, porcelain piece I liked very much. Um, porcelain's not an easy material to work with. I say that um, presuming because I've never actually worked in it and with it, but I, this is a very complicated piece. And it's um, got a nice surreal quality to it um, in three dimensions and it stands and it looks serpentine and something that could be created almost um, out of claymation and something that might come out of somewhere between Disney and Geffen, but it's, um, it's got its own rightness. And it actually, the, the, the modeled nature of it appears as though it could almost be carved as well. It could be something that Michael Lacacus made out of wood um, with all of the lines that were carved, but it's not. So that, that difference um, makes it very appealing too. Nice photograph, it, the abstraction of it, the theatricality, liked it very much. Some l wonderful little works on paper, um, drawings, fantasy, um, the postcards, I really like a lot. And here's an example, and if the artists were here, I would just mention to them that they would look so much better on their own and it probably was pragmatic to put them together and put them in one frame, but in doing so, and I could be totally wrong, it may be that there's a narrative to them and that they're meant to be seen almost filmically and sequentially and that's fine, but I mean an image like this on its own would just be so great because there are these very complicated worlds and the moment you put them all together uh, it gets a little cacophonous, almost like the Tower of Babel, and, and the simplicity of one statement is canceled out. So that's just a little kind of constructive critique. Um, this is the only example of thread embroidered work. Um, I like it a lot. Um, I like it because it's, it's very closely and densely stitched. The composition is abstract and in a Tondo circular form. And I'm reminded of an artist who actually was um, a prison inmate who took his socks and un who took his socks and, and took the thread out of his socks and then used that thread to make embroidered pieces that were the most amazing scenes representational rather than abstracted, but that, I just recalled that amazing story and I saw it in, um, in North Carolina uh, at Sika at, um, when I was down there. Anyway, this is also a great piece. This um, reminds me of Birchfield, who was someone who did watercolors of houses and spoke about the house as an entity and a person, kind of almost like every house had its own personality. I love the way that they bled the house so that the house um, you know, takes on this very mysterious, almost haunted quality. Um, and it's you know, somewhere between surrealism and American modernism, which I like. So. We'll have to figure out drawings because I don't, you know, the, the question will come up as to whether the drawings should be segregated on their own and shown only with other works on paper or whether they deserve to be in the context of, you know, there may be some photographs and actually it may come down to looking at the content to see what the congruences are between a photograph and a drawing because then that's of interest too. But everything will have a lot of space which will be great. Um, this artist presented a number of drawings. They're very, very, um, they're very disturbing, but they're very, um, you know, I'm trying to remember the name. There was, a, there was an artist who was a pre-Raphaelite who drew these weird worlds of gnomes and um, dwarfs and like the little people. So this is, this is a certain analog to that, um, but it's a, it's a pretty remarkable drawing, you know? Um, I 
And there's something scary, but there's also something kind of comforting about all the strands and the skeins and the membrane-like structure of it. So that drew me immediately. Uh, this drawing is a little bit different. It's a little more... Um, it seems to be put together with, with more uh, consolidation. You know, objects are drawn. You have a sense of what it is, but the same kind of mystery which has always attracted me exists also. So what is going on here? Are these rocks? Are these body parts? Is it bound? Um, you know, is it... Uh, it reminds me of um, Nancy Grossman, who did these masks and bound, a lot of drawings of bound figures, figures in bondage. So um, that's possible. It could be uh, bondage related. Um, and then the hands are creeping out. It could be an Orthodox Jew with spilling on. You know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of those things and surrounded by a lot of other things, natural elements and stones. So it's a nice, it's a nice composition and it's a drawing. So needless to say, I'm a sucker for drawing. <laughs> uh, interesting painting, less abstract, more narrative. There's a drama going on. I like the format, which is this kind of horizontal format. Uh, it's a confrontation between two groups. It, there's still a mystery as to what exactly is being played out. Um, and, and that's, I like that too. Um, the frame is the frame, but I think probably most people would, wouldn't mind it. Uh, these pieces, I'm trying to, still trying to get a bead on whether this is a... No, you know, I thought it was a skateboard, but it's not. It kind of looks a little like a skateboard, but it actually now I'm thinking it's more like one of the almost Polynesian or Aboriginal bark objects that would, would have been painted. But in this instance, it's full of little photographs and strings and some kind of genealogical map. And it's telling us a story, too. Um, and it's nice. I presume it's to be hung. Or maybe not. It's no, supposed to be on its legs. Is it hung at the top? Good, perfect. Okay, good. Okay, that'd be great. So that would be a nice place to find. A tin type, which is a very old photographic process. Um, and whenever you see it, it's hard not to you know, feel romantic about it. And the content reinforces that. It's a bridge, a walkway, contemporary scene, but, but suddenly it feels 19th century you know, to me, which is nice. It's refreshing. More photography, more works on paper, um, a monotype, the print, a number of good prints, another monotype on the far wall, very good, uh, photographs, two photographs. Uh, photography strong, very, very strong, and, and even, you know, there these two images of people jumping, one probably out of a body of water, one into the body of water, I found, here's an instance where I would certainly use both of them because they're, they complement each other in a very nice way. And um, whoever the photographer was really hit it. I feel like they, they caught that decisive moment that Cartier-Bresson talks about where any other moment on either side of the action would have produced a very different image, but they really they hit it just at the right time. Uh, a dreamy, you know, kind of um, playfulness of people on the beach. Um, but the distance from them creates a real romanticism to it, kind of a dreamy quality. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, this person I like very much in ceramics because it, it's got the vitality and the grit and the uh, humor, although maybe a little less humorous, but some quirky of uh, Robert Arneson. And I think whoever made it is, you know, well on their way to kind of tackling great things in ceramic. It's an underrated medium and is always given a craft connotation. But if you look at Arneson and, and Ken Price, they're remarkable sculptors. So it really has that potential. Yeah. Okay. I think I've said enough.